Our next guest is the subject of a new film, and one of the publicity uh, blurbs for the film says that she is the most influential person you never heard of. Well, I've heard of her. I know her, I respect her, I have admired her for a long time. Heather Booth is a long time activist, a strategist about progressive issues, her roots in movement activism go back to the 1960s to the civil rights, anti-war, and uh, women's rights movements of that era, and she has been active as a leader, a trainer, and an advisor, and a guide ever since, and she joins us now. Heather, welcome to the program. What a generous introduction, and Richard, especially from you. You have been such a fabulous partner on so many struggles in which people really have advanced because we organized uh, with your expertise on financial reform, on health care reform, on social security, and other issues, and uh, really underscoring the point that even in these perilous times, we will make progress. We will win when we organize. Well, first of all, I didn't expect such kind words. It's not a prerequisite for appearing on the program, but it's, it's certainly appreciated. And, all uh, genuine, all genuine. Uh, uh, likewise. And, and I would add, Heather, by the way, that I couldn't agree more that we will make progress. And, uh, you know, it's one of the things I like about you. It's something I like to think I share. I am fundamentally an optimist. And before we get into the movie or any of that, why don't we just start there? These, for a lot of people, these are dark times, and I think there are, my personal opinion, but I want your thoughts on this, is that there are two obstacles, internal obstacles we face right now as we try to organize ourselves, and those are despair and rage. And, uh, you know, anger is, can be healthy. Despair never is. Rage can lead us off in the wrong direction. So tell me this. Uh, first of all, do you agree? And secondly, if you are optimistic, why are you optimistic? Those are Im important points, important points, Richard. And I guess what guides me, the emotions or, or the concept that's parallel to what you just described on optimism, pessimism, uh, rage, despair, what guides me is what Antonio Gramsci once wrote which is pessimism of the intellect. We think things, we anticipate it could be very bad. This is going down. Lives will be in peril. Pessimism of the intellect, but optimism of the will. Mm. In the face of this, by God, we are driving forward. We know what our forces are. We have a plan. We have a theory. We have a direction. We have our values at stake and we see our numbers increasing every single day when we organize and implement on a strategic plan. So I guess what makes me more of an optimist or an optimist even in very perilous times is that I believe in the power of people organized uh, when there also is a conscious plan, figuring out where you wanna go, where we are now, and then implementing a plan for how to get there. You know, uh, I thank you for that. And I always, uh, at times like this, when I hear something like that, uh, sometimes I'm reminded of uh, some words from the Bhagavad Gita, which was Gandhi's favorite book, uh, where it says the wise person is entitled to her actions. I'm, I'm modernizing the gender. Uh, uh, the wise person is entitled to her actions, not the fruit of her actions, meaning that we do the right thing because it is the right thing. And we, you know, we let it work out as it will, but by doing the right thing, I think we become stronger as individuals as, and as a movement. Uh, do you agree with that? I surely do. I surely do. Um, you know, for operating in these perilous and terrifying times, and people who point out how frightening it is, they're also right that families will be divided. People may die if the health care bill uh, is undermined. Uh, there will be terrible choices that will face 
organizations and our whole progressive infrastructure may be threatened. But I also think that out of times of greatest crisis, if we continue to organize, that in fact, we often make the greatest advances that you can't see at the beginning, but in fact, then develop. Um, give two sort of parallels on it. One was from my own experience uh, in early organizing in the civil rights movement. In 1964 in Mississippi, not only were the three young men, Goodman, Schwerner, and Cheney, murdered, that many heard about, uh, who the summer volunteers, but while they were looking for the bodies of those three young men, they found the bodies of eight other black men whose hands had been bound or feet chopped off. And those murders hadn't even been reported. And when they were, the bodies were found, they weren't even investigated. Mm. And you say, how hopeless was that? Nothing can happen. Their black lives didn't matter at that point. But within a year, it was a Voting Rights Act. And Mississippi has more elected officials who are African-American than any other state in the country. We have much, much, much further to go. And the pushback is painful. But we make progress often in the bleakest times if we organize. And I think that it is possible that in this moment of great peril, if we organize, we may see a rebirth of a progressive movement and new majorities for change I, I, I bring us a more hopeful time. You know, I, I, I think that's a, 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 a very, you know, that's an excellent point, important point. Two, two thoughts coming out of that. One is that, you know, we look back, we tend to look back at the progress we've made in history and with that retrospective view, it feels inevitable. It feels inevitable that the civil rights movement was going to succeed. It feels inevitable that women were going to get the vote. It feels inevitable that the North was going to win the Civil War and, and slavery was going to end. It feels inevitable that the Allies were going to win the Second World War. But while you're in this struggle, it you have no word from on high that says you're going to win. It requires the belief that you can win and a good plan and implementing it and doing the work every day doing the work when it's often too hot mm. too cold i'm too tired i'm not positive what the outcome will be it's too boring but in fact doing the work every day and organizing talking to people talking to those who aren't yet convinced talking to those who are going off in one direction and we'd like to find ways we can work together, listening, changing our views in order to develop a stronger whole. And those are the fundamentals of organizing. And it's what I think we have to count on in order to overcome uh, these, these difficult periods and make the future, uh, if not inevitable, make that more positive outcome more likely. You know, and, and again, we're talking with Heather Booth, longtime activist, leader, and um, subject of the new film, Heather Booth, Changing the World. Uh, you've mentioned a plan a couple times, Heather, so I, 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 I'm interested, uh, you know, uh, the fact that you've mentioned it suggests two things to me. One is, of course, the importance of a plan, and perhaps you have some thoughts about what that plan should look like. And number two, perhaps, I don't know, do you have a concern that the progressive movement is operating without a plan now? So let's talk a little bit. What are your thoughts about that plan? Well, one thing, just as a tool that people can use, is there's a training center I had started called Midwest Academy. You can find it uh, through the web at www.midwestacademy.com. It's been a training center for organizers since 1973 training groups from NAACP and Planned Parenthood and community groups, small groups and large groups of all kinds to teach the strategies and skills uh, and historical movement context of our organizing that strengthens us. And in that training, there's an entire element and a focus on developing a strategic plan. You also can find uh, these elements of developing a plan, how you develop a plan, and build a coalition process and become stronger in developing a plan in a manual from the Academy called um, Organizing for Social Change. 
and you can often get it in progressive bookstores or on Amazon, which is buying up everything these days. Um, and that walks people through step-by-step -step questions to ask. Most of the questions being obvious, but sometimes part of good organizing is the obvious made explicit. On the second part of the question you asked of, is there a plan now? Uh, first of all, there are many different plans and there are many different efforts, many of which seem to be quite successful, not all of which, but many of which. And it seems to me the major elements, among the major elements we need now for our organizing, one is this incredible resistance we see uh, turning out, uh, whether it's the Women's March or this march on the NRA or uh, going to the White House around Russia. Uh, I'm looking for, for one thing now. So I, the, um, so I can find this quickly. I was looking for, oh, if I can't find it, I'll let it go. I was looking for my pussy hat. I usually carry it with me at all times. Uh, oh, just yes, as a that, sign right, that right. We need to continue that mobilizing. Right. But in addition to mobilizing, we need to do at least two other things that are in addition to that. And the mobilizing, wonderful as it is, is not enough. One, we need to organize. What organizing means is it means listening to people, talking to people, whether it's canvassing or house parties or social gatherings, and then finding ways to engage and, and recruiting for shared efforts that reflect our joint values. The other thing that we need to do increasingly is to move that energy into elections. Electoral power matters. It's not the only form of power. And if we haven't organized before the election, the outcome won't be effective if we only did elections, but we need to combine them. It's one of the reasons I've actually been excited the Democratic Party just took on its summer of resistance. So the Democratic Party is saying we need to engage with the community. And there are other groups, Move On has its summer of resistance, Greenpeace has its summer of resistance, and, and Move On talks about electoralizing the resistance and moving from protest to power. All of that's part of the strategy. And doesn't that include, um, uh, you, you may recall, Heather, we've talked years ago, you know, I, I've always had reservations about the Democratic Party. I am rejoining the party, by the way, but um, I'm moving to Maryland. I want Ben Jealous to be my governor. I want a ah. truly, I, I want a truly progressive Democratic Party, so I am rejoining. But um, I'm always concerned about the co-optation of the, of, of the resistance energy. I want the movement to drive the electoral politics, not the electoral politics that is driving the movement. And I don't know if you think I'm off base in that, but I think, I think we have a tremendous opening and opportunity if we take the energy of resistance, not just to Trump and not even just to Republicans, yeah. but to the system as it is and say that the, the electoral campaigns are gonna be like Christmas tree lights on a wire. You know, we're gonna be the wire. We're gonna be the current. You guys, our candidates are gonna be the lights, uh, but, but we are going to create something different that is from a movement to electoral politics rather than vice versa. Does that make any sense to you? I love the thought of saying that our politics reflect movement politics. There's so much that's part of that. Um, for one thing, it means that people are in motion that it's not just talking about it. It's not just what's the right message as if it just stays on a, or a policy on a piece of paper, important as that is. And I've often turned to you for policy analysis, but it's people in motion. But it also implies that one movement builds on another. So there are ways in which all our movements go back to the civil rights movement. And we need to build on that, sustain it, carry it forward, a women's movement movement for LGBTQ, movement on healthcare, on immigration reform. And all of these are really part of one broader movement and we need to have the message that we all stand together. We're all in this together. Well, and whether, whether or not electoral politics will reflect our movement, 
or the movement be reflection of a more narrow politics in part depends on what we do. It right. may be easy to criticize others, but we've got to get out there and build our power and build our organization. Well, I couldn't agree more. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we will have to leave it there. But Adder Booth, uh, uh, it must be interesting to have a movie made about you. Uh, thank you for continuing to do such uh, important work. Thank you for your insights. And thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much. It's wonderful having your voice out there and magnifying others in the public. I'll make one pitch on the movie for those who are interested in seeing it because it's really a movement building film uh, telling sort of the 50 years of movement struggle and this refrain, you can change the world only if you organize though. You can get uh, copies of the film, show it locally, use it to build your organization and movement. If you go to um, the website www.heatherbooththefilm.com. Thanks so much, Richard. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you uh, in the struggle.